Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, I hope you are doing good. This is Dr. Masood and we are going to discuss today the strategic significance of the Indian Ocean region and how India is uh, trying to dominate this region. First of all, if you look at the Indian India's uh, trade volume, that is 90% from the maritime areas and uh, this region, Indian Ocean region, is very important region. 100,000 merchantmen transit every year this region and of course, a trillion dollar trade passed through this region. Uh, more than that, India <clears throat> also enjoys a huge economic, uh, exclusive economic zone areas of about 2 million square kilometer, which, uh, you know, force India to develop a huge naval force to dominate these areas. India is uh, one of the largest, uh, they are the largest uh, population at the moment, and uh, to support their population, their, uh, to pro pro provide them employment, to provide them food, security, everything. India needs to improve its uh, ties with other countries and it needs to improve its maritime trade with other states because they are growing economy. And by 2024, India's economic growth would be 6.7%, which is huge. And uh, for that matter, they need uh, more and more resources, more and more connectivity. And for that matter, India needs influence in the Indian Ocean region. <clears throat> to maintain her influence in the Indian Ocean region, India is in close ties with the United States of America to, uh, you know, uh, to control this region. For example, um, they carried out many uh, bilateral pacts with the United States of America, like Limua, Bika, Comcasa, STA, Industrial uh, Security Annex, and of course, uh, the uh, military exercises which they carry out, naval exercises in the region. So the idea is to dominate this region with the support of the United States of America. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's understand, first of all, the importance of Indian Ocean region, uh, the geographical significance of the Indian Ocean region. Indian Ocean region is a huge water body. As you can see on the slide, that 20% of the water on the Earth's surface is there, and uh, which makes this region very important region. It connects uh, different parts of the world, and of course, uh, it has emerged as the most significant region for the security, strategy, and economy in the Asia-Pacific region and beyond, of course. And this is the reason that most of the uh, choke points are there. Most of the countries, they import their oil supplies from this region. For example, 80% of the world's seaborne trade in oil passed through this region, which is called Indian Ocean region. So as you can see, there are many choke points. Uh, which connects this region, which is called the Indian Ocean region, and it's a, it is a very important water body. So uh, for global maritime trade, this region is very important uh, because 40% of the world's oil and gas reserves also reside in this region, especially in the Persian Gulf and, of course, uh, in parts of, uh, you know, uh, African states and others. So uh, for that matter, Indian Ocean region is an important region for global connectivity, of course, and uh, for oil supplies and others. And this is the reason that this region is epicenter of, uh, you know, uh, competitions and many countries like China, America and others, they are competing in this region. Uh, if you look at the maritime trade, 50% uh, of the world's container ships pass through this region. Uh, and one third of the world's bulk cargo traffic also pass through, through this region. So. Most important thing is the oil supplies uh, from the Persian Gulf and the others. It passed through the Indian Ocean region. And uh, based on that, uh, you know, many countries are operating in this region, especially China, with their strategies of strings of pearls uh, in which they got many bases in and around Indian Ocean region, like, for example, in Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh, in Myanmar, and, of course, in uh, Gawadar and uh, Djibouti. So with these uh, military bases, India is trying to protect her maritime interest in the region. India also got some bases here. For example, they got a base here in Vishakhapatnam, Kochi, Karwar, and Mumbai. And they also got a base in Andaman Nicobar Island, uh, Island of India, uh, which provide India greater access to Indian Ocean region and beyond that. So many other countries also operate in this region. For example, the United States of America, and uh, their allies also operate in this region and they operate in favor of China, uh, India, sorry. Now let's quickly analyze that how India is going to dominate this region. Uh, India is trying uh, to, you know, dominate this region with their uh, huge 
maritime force, especially they are developing aircraft carriers. Um, aircraft carrier is basically um, for India, it's just a global power status and it is not going to change strategic dynamics in the region because it is not focused on Pakistan because Pakistan and India share border and India uh, won't rely on aircraft carrier to attack Pakistan. So the purpose of aircraft carrier at the time, at the moment is power projection by India and uh, they just want to be in the elite club of the world. And uh, just like the United States of America, the way they got aircraft carriers and uh, they got uh, their presence in and around, all around the globe um, with their aircraft carriers. So India also want to have aircraft carrier and group carriers to dominate uh, this region and beyond. But as far as uh, this uh, aircraft carrier is concerned, uh, it is not uh, considered as a threat for Pakistan because Pakistan possess uh, serious capabilities which can take out this aircraft carrier. For example, air launch cruise missile Rad uh, with uh, 600 kilometers of um, range can take out aircraft carrier if it come ever comes to, uh, close to Pakistan. Pakistan also got Babur, which is SLCM, submarine launch cruise missile. And with these capabilities, Pakistan can easily take out this uh, and deter India's uh, uh, you know, aircraft carrier in this area. Uh, along with that, Pakistan also possess uh, serious capabilities like torpedoes and good air force, along with many other capabilities, which can easily take out India's aircraft carrier. The most um, worrisome thing for Pakistan is the nuclear submarines of India. India is adding up nuclear submarine. They already got Arihan and uh, they are uh, going to add Arighat as well in coming years. And by 2030, India is going to have five to six nuclear submarines according to plan. And these submarines are going to uh, change the uh, strategic dynamics of the Indian Ocean region because it would get India would get greater outreach and uh, greater endurance in the maritime region, especially in the Indian Ocean region and assured second strike capability would also come to India. And India is also coming up with many other submarines like uh, Project 75 Alpha, nuclear powered attack submarines. And uh, these submarines will also be equipped with uh, modern capabilities, like for example, uh, uh, supersonic and hypersonic missiles. Sagarika missile and uh, K-5 with a range of about 3,500, K-4 is uh, 3,500 kilometers and uh, the uh, the K-8 missile would be of 8,000 kilometers. So with these capabilities, India is going to dominate the Indian Ocean region. India is also um, adding up Brahmos 2, which is a very important uh, missile and uh, this uh, type of capabilities are going to uh, seriously impact the strategic stability of South Asia. The advanced version of Brahmos M is also being inducted, and um, by 2024, India is going to carry out uh, different tests of this particular missile from land, air, and ship. And such capabilities are definitely going to uh, give Indian Air uh, Navy uh, an offensive punch in the maritime domain. Uh, on the other hand, Pakistan also possess certain capabilities which can seriously deter India, uh, especially uh, Pakistan possess, um, uh, Pakistan don't have a nuclear submarine, but Pakistan has equipped its conventional submarine with conventional, uh, with nuclear missile, SLCM, Babar. So SLCM uh, with a potent range of about, uh, you know, 450 to, uh, you know, uh, beyond four, 450 kilometers, can easily take out India's Mumbai. Now the question is, can India uh, afford losing Mumbai? Because Mumbai's uh, GDP is close to $277 billion and uh, the net worth of Mumbai, Mumbai is also huge for India. For example, uh, its net worth is uh, about $1 trillion and about 46,000 millionaires and 48 billionaires uh, lives in Mumbai. So, which makes Mumbai a uh, very, very attractive, uh, you can say, uh, <clears throat> destination or attractive target for Pakistani missiles. So, this is this is going to provide Pakistan with a, uh, you know, with a, with a, you can say, limited second strike capability, but still, uh, Pakistan is capable of taking out Mumbai, which India won't, uh, you know, uh, lose. 
other than that uh, nuclear submarines india is also adding up conventional submarines which uh, runs on uh, uh, diesel engines and uh, these submarines are also going to give india greater endurance in the maritime domain the most uh, another Im most important thing in this uh, domain maritime domain awareness um, is spy satellite at sea um, with the name of uh, gsat 7 or rukmini now this particular satellite is going to provide india uh, with a greater lens of about 2000 nautical miles uh, from the arabian sea to strait of malacca and uh, this is going to provide india a huge lens and uh, real time information about uh, the maritime traffic and the other military activities in the indian ocean region and beyond so such type of capabilities are going to provide india with real time information which is very important when it comes to any conflict in the indian ocean region pakistan on the other hand also possess uh, pc3 orions which is the old version um and um, but still pakistan is capable enough to uh, detect india's submarines uh, especially in 2016 19 and 21 three times india's submarine tried to uh, enter pakistani waters and it was detected effectively so pakistan is a coastal navy and uh, pakistan can easily detect uh, submarines uh, within its uh, you know uh, maritime domain but uh, as far as long range uh, capabilities are concerned or spy satellites are concerned we don't possess those capabilities um add, add to that india also adding up destroyers they, these are the warships and uh, you know the sea is basically slow and these type of warships like destroyers provide uh, capabilities like for example they are also considered as horse horses of sea and they are very potent fast mobile and quick and they also they are equipped with certain capabilities which are very dangerous for uh, pakistan so by 2025 they are going to add certain capabilities uh, and these capabilities can seriously help india to overcome the, uh, you know deficiencies at the in the in the maritime domain other than uh, uh, destroyers india is also adding up frigates and these uh, are also warships with a very uh, potent range and uh, offensive capabilities like they'll be equipped with the uh, Brahmos cruise missiles, um, air defense systems like barricade and anti-ship torpedoes, and of course, many other capabilities which can seriously uh, impact on Pakistan's maritime interests. Especially these uh, frigates are going to provide India with a range of about 10,000 kilometers. And in the Indian Ocean region, India would have upper edge against Pakistan in coming years. Um, India is also adding up some anti-submarine warfare corvettes, <laughs> and these corvettes are going to provide India with a range of about uh, 3,400 nautical miles and they got a spy speed of about 25 knots. These uh, warships are used to detect submarines and um, such, uh, you know, aircraft, such uh, warships are serious threat to the submarines, Pakistani submarines. And uh, Pakistan um, is trying to cope up with this issue because this is a serious issue for Pakistan. So India is adding up these submarines for surveillance, for escort, for deterrence surface and underwater warfare and coastal defense and uh, they are spending a lot of money 4.6 billion dollars estimated cost is going to come on that and they are going to enjoy greater um, you can say outreach in the indian ocean region with these capabilities and uh, pakistan this is one of the area where pakistan is safe uh, you know weak and pakistan need to overcome this area um, add to that, India is adding up P8I uh, maritime domain awareness aircraft, and these anti-submarine warfare aircraft are really potent aircraft. They are equipped uh, with uh, very potent missiles, American missiles and harpoon, and uh, these um, uh, aircraft are also equipped with torpedoes, rockets, and depth charges. So basically, it travels at a speed of about 9097, 907 kilometers and uh, 1200 nautical mile area it can cover so india has inducted 12 and 16 uh, six are more being planned so basically this deal uh, 2.1 billion dollar deal is going to be a serious threat for pakistan's surface ships subsurface ship and aerial uh, you can say 
uh, assets like aircraft or UAVs or helicopters, anything in air or on surface or on subsurface would be detected, especially Pakistan submarines would be under serious threat. So India is uh, adding up all these capabilities. Uh, added to that, India is adding up uh, some helicopters as well to take out Pakistani submarines. Um, India is in uh, recently, India also carried out a deal with the United States of America for Guardian uh, MQ 9C Guardian uh, drones, UAVs, armed drones, and these drones are equipped with the uh, Hellfire missiles and, and many other capabilities. Uh, which are serious threat for Pakistan. So such uh, such drones are not only going to give India, um, you're going to provide India with the greater uh, upper edge in uh, information warfare, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities, but also India can use such capabilities for maritime targeting or um, other things. So such capabilities are going to provide India with the upper edge uh, against Pakistan. India also got uh, some other maritime uh, surveillance aircraft as well, like Dormier 228. But um, as far as uh, PHI or other capabilities are concerned, they are beyond Pakistan's reach. So in a nutshell, um, India is going to dominate the Indian Ocean region in coming years. And they are adding up serious capabilities, starting from aircraft carriers, nuclear submarines, and many other, other capabilities. And these capabilities are going to provide India with uh, huge, huge, uh, you can say, you know, dominance in the Arabian Sea, wider Indian Ocean region, and of course, in the Bay of Bengal areas. So India, with these capabilities, can dominate and try to uh, hurt Pakistan's or China's maritime interest in the region. So Chinese, on the other hand, they are also collaborating with Pakistan. They are also collaborating with the regional partners and they are establishing some naval bases um, in and around Indian Ocean region. And uh, together, Pakistan and China, if they work together, they can uh, mitigate this threat in coming years. So thank you very much. If you got any question, you can leave comment and subscribe to, uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, Dr. Masood. Um, see you, inshallah, in the next uh, lecture. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.